you should remember these two points different materials are cycled in the environment in separate bio geo chemical cycles so bio geo chemicals that is geo is earth bio means it is biological and chemical you already know so all this consist of the environmental cycle in this cycles essential nutrients like nitrogen carbon oxygen and water are changed from one form to another form we will see in this topic how it is now first we will discuss about what happens when we add our waste to the environment and then based on this topic we will solve some questions the first part you have to remember enzymes are specific in their action specific enzymes are needed for the breakdown of particular substance so for example bacteria fungi they are required very much because they break down the substances and that is how disposal takes place if they were not there disposal wouldn't have been take, uh, taking place that is why we will not get any energy if we try to eat a coal ami jar coal khallo jala amka kaich energy gaochi na because of this many human made materials like plastic very important is plastic will not be broken down by the action of bacteria or any saprophytes no saprophytes are like bacteria they eat the material they are called the saprophytes so next these materials will be acted upon by physical processes like heat and pressure but under the ambient condition found in our environment this persists for a long time what is this persists like for example the plastic or the waste material which doesn't get degrading degrading or it is non degradable we'll see that further so they remain in the environment for a long time and they become harmful for the environmental life cycle so with this let us see the two things what is biodegradable material and what is non biodegradable degradable material just a minute so i separate these two things one is biodegradable material another one is non biodegradable material the substances that are broken down by biological processes are called biodegradable degradable material now for example a cow dung cow dung doesn't remain long time it get mixed up in the environment very easily and let's say the plastic plastic is the best example for non degradable biodegradable material substances that are not broken down are called as non biodegradable material for example plastic and example of biodegradable is cow dung or fruits or bread okay these all these things are biodegradable now we have to understand what is called as ecosystem and what are the components of the ecosystem what is ecosystem all the interacting organism organism in the in area together with the non living constituents of the environment form an ecosystem for example let us take a garden garden there will be grass there will be trees there will be butterfly there will be frog and there will be insects there will be earthworms and there will be other non living factors also like for example temperature pressure environment water or humidity all these constitute other part some are living and some are non living components so let us see what are the types of ecosystems there are two types of ecosystem let me use my pencil over here one minute there are two types of ecosystems 
वन इज कॉल्ड न्यूट्रल इकोसिस्टम सॉरी नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम एंड द सेकेंड वन इज ह्यूमन मेड और आर्टिफिशियल इकोसिस्टम द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ फर्स्ट दैट इज नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम आर फॉरेस्ट पॉन्स एंड लेक्स दिस आर नेचुरल इकोसिस्टम एंड ह्यूमन मेड और आर्टिफिशियल इकोसिस्टम आर एग्जाम्पल्स आर गार्डन्स एंड क्रॉप फील्ड दीज आर मैन मेड एंड दीज आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ इकोसिस्टम नाउ वॉट आर द कॉम्पोनेट्स ऑफ इकोसिस्टम इकोसिस्टम कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू पार्ट वन इज कॉल्ड एज बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेट्स एंड एन अदर वन आर ए बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेट्स वॉट आर बायोटिक कॉम्पोनेट्स it comprising of living organism like for example i have told about the garden garden has got flowers trees frog insect butterflies all these are biotic components and a biotic components comprising of physical factors like pressure rainfall this is pressure not uh, this there is wrong something wind soil and mineral so let me correct this give me 10 seconds so these are components of a biotic ecosystem so next what are the classes of organism we have got three types of organisms the class the first one are called as producers second one are called as consumers and third one are called as decomposer now who are producers all green plants and certain blue green algae which can produce food by photosynthesis they are all called as producers who are consumers organism depend on the producers either directly or indirectly for their sustenance they are called as consumers for example all these herbivorous animal carnivorous animals and omnivorous and parasites parasites depend upon the other trees or other living beings for their uh, living so herbivorous carnivorous omnivorous and parasite they are all consumers they are all consumers and then who are decomposers if there is a dead animal dead plant is there how it goes into the earth that is because of the earth, how it is get depleted uh, environment gets clean that is because of the decomposers microorganisms comprising bacteria and fungi break down the dead remains and waste product of organism and they are called as decomposers now what are food chains organism taking part at various biotic levels form a food chain because you see the herbivorous animal eat plants and uh, carnivorous animals eat this herbivorous animals so it becomes food chain so that is called food chain and there is something called as trophic level each step or level of food chain forms a trophic level it forms a trophic level and now we will see different trophic levels the first trophic level second trophic level third trophic level and fourth trophic level there can be fifth trophic level also so what is first trophic level the autotrophs or the producer these producers are also called as uh, autotrophs so autotrophs or these producers they are first level for example plants who prepare their food with the help of a sunlight and water from the environment with the by the process called photosynthesis they are all autotroph uh, troughs or producers they are first level and second level are herbivorous 
or the primary consumers. For example, cow, buffalo, goats, all these are uh, sheep, all these are the second trophic level or herbivorous or primary consumers. The third trophic level is small carnivorous or they are called as secondary consumers also. And the fourth one is large carnivorous or they are tertiary consumers like for example a lion. Now next. At first tropic level they fix up the solar energy and make it available for heterotrophs or the consumers. All these consumers they are called as heterotrophs. They are called as heterotrophs. Now let us see this energy conversion. The energy incident on the leaves of the trees, not whole of the energy of the sun is converted uh, into food or useful. It is 1% energy which is incident on the leaves from the sun is converted into energy of the plant. It's just 1%. From there, what happens, you know, these plants are eaten by other uh, consumers and other consumers, what they do, there is some energy loss as heat because heating takes place inside our body. Some heat is lost. In digestion, some energy is lost and in growth and reproduction, some energy is lost. So 10% average of the food eaten uh, is the energy that is utilized. And then at second level, when the second level, the small carnivorous animals eat this uh, uh, organism, they there utilize only 10% of energy. And at the fourth level, they utilize 10% of the third uh, organism energy. You see, the energy utilization falls down as we go from lower level to higher level. It falls down. For example, if 100 joules is consumed in the fourth level consumer or used by the fourth level, then the energy available over here is 1000 joules. Here it is available 10,000 joules. And here it is available one lakh joules. So you see as we go higher level, the energy availability is less and less. So you see at the top level, there are lesser number of organisms and at the lower level, there are higher number of organisms. Now conversion of sun energy is converted into food energy by plants and some energy is lost as heat in digestion and growth and in reproduction. You have to remember some points, important points. 10% average value of energy is available for next level that we have seen. Now decreased energy is available for higher levels that also we have seen. Greater number of lower trophic levels that also we have discussed. Then we have to discuss what is called as food web change. See, these food chains are not straight, but they are little complex and they will form the web. So that is called as food web chains. I will show you the food web chain diagram. We have already gone through the textbook, same diagram I am putting here. And as Rohan rightly told, flow of energy is unidirectional. So when we eat uh, produce from the plants, the energy that we consume, we cannot give it back to the plant. So it is unidirectional. So energy flows from lower trophic level to higher trophic level uh, and not reverse. So that is why it is said unidirectional. That is energy does not revert back to the lower level. So these are the five points uh, we are discussed we have discussed and before discussing the okay first I will discuss 
biological magnification what is biological magnification see uh, in order to uh, prevent the spoiling of the crop or the produce of the agriculture pesticides and other chemicals uh, are used on on the crop what happens to these pesticides and chemicals these pesticides and chemicals they are washed down in the soil and water so soil gets contaminated or soil and water gets contaminated or soil now this soil and water is used by aquatic animals or plants so this chemical goes into aquatic animals and plants and these produce of the plants and aquatic animals like fish we eat so we consume these chemicals we consume these chemicals from the food and when we uh, consume the chemicals from the food it gets accumulated in our body when it gets accumulated in our body our body becomes a uh, house for pesticides and chemicals and that is why all these sicknesses uh, reduction in life all that happens because of this process and all this process is called biological magnification this is called as biological magnification so this process is biological magnification so let me go to the last one before discussing this uh how our activities affect the environment see here this is food chain you see this is food chain uh in the forest so this is food chain in the grassland and this is in the pond so these are at lower levels which are nothing but the plants and at higher level they are animals aquatic or other animals now there are primary first is producers second is primary consumers as we have already discussed the third one is secondary consumers and fourth one are tertiary consumers this typical level diagram is shown in this uh, triangle and we have discuss about web change so this is straight chain but in actual it is not a straight chain so it is cr criss cross here it is criss cross so this is food web chain this is food web chain next what we have to discuss about how do our activities affect the environment and in that first we will discuss about the ozone layer and how it is getting depleted and second we will discuss about managing the garbage we produce and let us start with ozone layer or how it is getting depleted formula for ozone is o3 and ozone is a molecule formed by three atoms of oxygen and remember that ozone is deadly poison it is very very harmful but one good effect of ozone is that it shields the surface of the earth from ultraviolet radiations now sun gives out ultraviolet radiations and this ultraviolet radiations are stopped by this ozone layer i it, this ozone layer does not allow this ultraviolet radiations to come to the earth and if this ultraviolet radiations comes to the earth it causes skin cancer the higher energy ultraviolet radiations split apart some molecules of oxygen now what happens you know at higher level this ultraviolet radiations they split the oxygen that is available at higher level into free oxygen atom that this is o2 it becomes o 
so what happens this ultraviolet rays oxygen from the environment when comes in ultraviolet rays you will get two oxygen atoms o and o and when this oxygen atom reacts with oxygen from the environment we get o3 and this o3 is nothing but the ozone and at higher level it forms the protective layer called the ozone layer so these atoms then combine with molecules molecular oxygen to form ozone as shown here now the most or the more concerned thing about the environment degradation or environment spoiling are some gases or pollutants like that there is one pollutant called cfc chlorofluorocarbon and this chlorofluorocarbon is used as the refrigerants you must have seen sometime your refrigerator or ac stops working and the mechanic tells you that uh, your refrigerator refrigerant has to be uh, replaced so it requires refri refrigerants and these are also used for fire extinguishers and when you use this the harmful chemical that is released cfcs those are released they will uh, reduce the ozone layer and when ozone layer gets reduced we get ultraviolet rays coming from the sun which are very harmful so this is about the ozone layer and next we will discuss about managing our garbage that we produce nowadays garbage is a big problem every city faces a garbage problem earlier that problem was not there when you go in cities you find everywhere the garbage is a problem so this is because our lifestyles have resulted in greater amount of waste material generation also changes in attitude have important role to play with more and more things we use becoming disposable anything we bring we have to dispose them plastics covers then uh, wrappers and so many things changes in packaging have resulted in much of our waste becoming non biodegradable this is very serious issue and you have to think over it we are spoiling our environment at what cost at our uh, living at the cost of our living we want more and more comforts but are we transferring this earth to the next generation in the good form no we are not and that is called as sustainable development if we are transferring our mother earth in good condition as we have received from earlier generation to the next generation then it is called as sustainable development are we doing sustainable development no okay you can discuss about disposable cups there are uh, in trains when you move you get tea or even uh, in the local shops also and uh, gadas you find this disposable cups maybe of plastic or maybe of paper paper are sometimes better than plastic because uh, plastic is non biodegradable then paper then there was uh, one time came in railways they used to serve tea with the help of coolards that is a cups uh, made of a mud but that is also almost stop so this is all about this topic on our environment and this is though it is small it is very important topic because we should all uh, be concerned in preserving our environment and you should understand this life cycle if we cut the life cycle then the whole environment will get spoiled we at e learning career academy are running classes for standard 9 and 10 in maths and science and also for standard 11th and 12th in physics chemistry mathematics and biology 
in offline as well as online mode using memory techniques. Here are the links for joining these classes. These links are also given in the description of this video.